Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we're still continuing our little series here. We take a look at the new commander skill trees here in update 0.10.0. And today we're going to look over the destroyer tree. You can see here I've grabbed my favorite destroyer. This is Tier 9 American Destroyer USS Fletcher. The best destroyer in World of Warships, duh. And uh, this is my Ovechkin captain because I, I just I like his little bonus skills, and we'll talk about those as we get a little farther in. But let's um let's not waste a lot of time. Let's get right to it and see what we've got here in these new skill trees. So first up, we have the new version of Expert Marksman to improve turret traverse here called Grease the Gears, twenty percent main battery traverse speed. For a high tier American destroyer, not a good investment. However. There are quite a number of destroyers in this game. For only one point, this is a pretty awesome little skill, right? Look, think about most most Japanese destroyers. Think about most, uh, especially like the mid-tier Russian destroyers, um, French destroyers. So even most of the mid-tier British destroyers. Like For one point, you're going to get a lot of use out of this skill as a destroyer captain. So keep an eye on this one, okay? Um, moving on here, we have uh, Liquidator, brand new skill. Did not used to exist in the old uh, old system. This adds plus 30% flood chance. Now, to understand how this skill works, you have to understand how flood chance and, and flood probability is calculated in World of Warships. I could do a whole separate video on this. Luckily for us, Wargaming already has a separate video on this. I'm going to put a link to it um, down below in the game chat, or in the, in the description. If I'm, if I'm really on the ball, I'll put a little link to it in a little video card here as well. I'm also going to put a link down to the wiki article on uh, on how Flood Chance is calculated. So if you don't want to watch the video, you can go read the little Wikipedia article. This hasn't changed. Like This, this mechanic has been around basically since, like you know, uh, probably alpha, right? The, the way Flood Chance works in this game um, is pretty straightforward. It's just not, the numbers don't work like you think they do. You see 30% chance of flood, you think, oh, I have a 30% more chance to, to cause flooding. Uh, it's not that simple, okay? It's it's not that simple. And so um, make sure you educate yourself a little bit, especially if you play a lot of Destroyer, okay? Bottom line is, there are ships in the game, there are torpedoes in the game that I would consider using this skill on. Most of them in the middle tiers. Probably not a lot of high tier stuff, although that's even debatable, right? This is this is for one point. There's a lot of interesting things you can get out of this skill, depending on where you, what ship and what torpedo armor you put it on. So if you want to, if you want to kind of dive into this, and I might, I may yet do a separate video, um, but for the moment, I'm going to just let this one ride. But for one point, I think there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack here when it comes to Liquidator. Uh, consumable Specialist, this is the exact same skill that we saw over in the Cruiser Tree in the exact same place for the exact same cost. This is a one-point skill that will reduce the time of your fighter and spotting aircraft. Ha! Fooled you. No destroyer in the game has fighter or spotting aircraft. However, you will find them with defensive fire, main battery, and torpedo reload. So, again, um, I look at the skill as something that might be really useful for, like, a French destroyer. Or you see there, defensive AA fire, maybe maybe on Fletcher, right? Maybe this is a skill that I, I consider investing in for Fletcher. Um, probably not, but it might be something I might play around with, especially in certain competitive modes or that kind of thing, where I know or expect to see an aircraft carrier. Gun feeder, use the old expert loader. This is unchanged. Uh, you want to switch, if you've got one shell fully loaded, you want to you switch types, push the button, and it happens quick, happens a little faster. Incoming fire alert, again, exact same skill, exact same position, exact same cost as we've seen over in the cruiser tree. One point skill lets you uh, gives you a little bit of warning when you've got uh, an incoming salvo. And then last here, preventive maintenance. Again, same position, same cost as the cruiser tree. This is probably going to become the, def the typical default skill for most destroyers for one point. Because before, like I used to use priority target a lot, um, but I can see preventive maintenance kind of taking that over, right? Just because, I mean... It, you know, it, being able to keep your engine and rudder working more reliably as a destroyer is worth a single commander point. Moving on to the second row here, we start all the way on the left with Pyrotechnician, the old the the old demolition expert. This is now um, kind of semi nerfed, just like in the cruiser tree. It's only a one percent um, main battery HE shell chance. Is this really noteworthy? Hmm. For some ships, I'm going to say it probably is. When you get to destroyers um, that have insanely fast reloads, let's let's think of an easy one. Let's think of Friesland. Right? Let's think of Friesland. Friesland is a ship that relies almost exclusively on its main battery and has a stupidly fast reload. 
Is this skill worth it on a Friesland? Yeah, I'd say so. Is it worth it on a Fletcher or a Grozovoy or a Shimakaze? No, I don't think so. Um, because those ships are more uh, a little more balanced. They're going to get more use out of one armament over the other. But if you find yourself like leaning super heavily on the guns, uh, Smalland or Holland is another one where you might get some use out of this skill. I've seen some. There are some players on the NA server that are just stupidly good with Smalland spam using those little those little pop guns, those little 120 millimeter Bofors pop guns with their what are they, like 1.2 second reload and just vomiting out shells. This 1% adds up when you vomit out a lot of shells, okay? So there are some corner cases where I think this is an interesting skill overall. Mm, your choice, but I probably would avoid it. Swiftfish, 5% torpedo speed. Now, something that, that occurred to me yesterday as I was looking all of this on looking over all this on stream, there is a module uh, that you can put in slot 3 and upgrade in slot 3 that increases your torpedo speed by 5%. And now we have this particular skill that upgrades your torpedo speed by another 5%. So you can actually get if you want to combine everything, up to 10% more torpedo speed. Hmm, okay. That's interesting. There are some really, really quick fish in this game that hit pretty hard. That, that might be the kind of thing that interests you, um, depending on the destroyer in question. Again, most of these torpedo skills, when I look at these, my brain immediately goes, oh, some Japanese destroyer captain is going to get super happy. Um, but I haven't actually spent the time to look at, uh, kind of break down and get into the numbers and do some of that stuff just yet. But again, 5% torpedo speed here. Uh, as a level 2 skill. Just like we saw in the cruiser tree, this is consumables enhancement, 10% to the duration of hydro, radar, smoke, or engine boost. Now, this becomes a little more interesting skill, a much more ship-specific skill. Uh, much like it was on the cruisers, right? That's a, that's a skill that on certain ships you'll be like, oh yeah, give me that. Destroyers, I feel like, is the same way. Um, you might consider uh, this would might be a, a worthwhile consideration skill for quite a number of German destroyers with that hydro that hydro boost surveillance radar. There aren't a ton of destroyers that have radar, but again, I look at a ship like uh, like a Smalland, or if you're crazy enough to play uh, like radar radar Yu Yang or radar Chung Mu, something like this may be useful. Corner cases smoke generator. Right now, I'd say eh, probably not. However, there is a ship currently in testing. Tier 10 Premium Commonwealth Destroyer Vampire Deuce. 10% action time on the smoke generator. The way that thing works with its little crawly smoke, not too bad. Haida, another ship that might like this. Your little crawly smoke lasts that much longer. Engine boost. Hmm. Possibly useful for the French destroyers, for example. Okay? So there's some corner cases that I think that this skill has some value. Extra heavy AP shells. 5% bonus to the damage of main battery AP shells. I am struggling to think of a situation where I would invest in this skill. And that's not to, that's not because they're like there are destroyers out there that have some pretty solid AP shells. But to me, it's the combination of having the AP the, the, the solid shell and the rate of fire to make use of it to get to kind of maximize this 5% damage bonus. And that's where I start to struggle. You can make an argument for this, again, on the French destroyers. A Kleber, a Mogador, a Le Fantasque, or a Le Tarib. You can make an argument, but I don't think it's a great place to spend two points. Priority target. Now, this is, of course, the same skill we've always had. It just costs more. So, I, I said something yesterday, and I'm going to kind of do a little tangent here on the side. I said something yesterday in the comments to the Cruiser video that was 100% wrong, and I want to correct myself. To me, for a long time, the base, the quote-unquote standard stock base destroyer build has always been, um, for me, was priority target at one point, last stand at two points, survivability expert at three points, and concealment expert at four points. I said yesterday in the video that you could get that exact same build for 10 points, only now priority target and last stand were flip-flopped because in the cruiser tree, last stand is a one-point skill, but in the destroyer skill, destroyer's tree, you see here we're almost to it, last stand is a two-point skill. So... I lied a little bit. I apologize for that. So my quote-unquote old-school standard destroyer build would now cost 11 points. Well, technically 12 points because you have to have something down here before you can take both of these. So my new quote-unquote dis standard destroyer build would probably be something more like, you know, preventive maintenance instead of priority target and then last stand, survivability, and concealment. But priority target, I feel like, is definitely a really useful skill for destroyers, especially, especially if you're playing one of those little quick zoomy zoomy gunboats. Again, the French, the high tier Russians, um, potentially this new German line that's been discussed. It's nice to be able to know if I've only got one person looking at me. Okay, no big deal. 
as that number starts to climb up three, four, five, now I probably want to stop shooting <laughs> and 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 reposition and 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 not take so much incoming fire, that kind of thing. So again, two points. This becomes a little more of an opportunity cost. You have to figure out what ships you want to use it on and what ships you don't. And then at two points, last stand. Again, as we were just discussing, same skill it's always been. Not even a change in cost here. Uh, it's always it, honestly, it's always it's for four or five years now. It's been a two point destroyer skill, and here it is, right where it, where it's where you'd expect to find it. Moving on to the third tier, we have Main Battery and AA Specialist. This is the new fancy name for what we used to call Basic Firing Training. And it is a little different skill because it's not as good. For three points now, you, for three points you used to get 10% more AA, a continuous AA damage, and a minus 10% main battery reload speed. You see here, Wargaming has nerfed that a little bit. You're only, you are still getting the AA bonus, but you're only getting a five point, a five percent increase to your main battery reload time. To me, this is a consequence of the European destroyer line. If you again, I come back to a look at Small and Holland, Uster Jutland, all of these little ships that have these super freezing, that have these super quick firing spammy guns. That ten percent bonus was huge, and I think Wargaming maybe miss over underestimated uh, uh, quite how impactful this skill was for those ships, especially for a ship like Friesland that already has really good AA. You're buffing the main battery and my AA is getting better. Oh yes, sign me up for that for three points, right? And this is still a really good skill. It's just not as good as it once was for the same cost. Over here, we have what we used to call Torpedo Armament Expertise, now called Fill the Tubes. This skill has not changed. Minus 10% to Torpedo Reload Speed. You're going to take this on pretty much anything you want to be spamming torpedoes out of, which will 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 absolutely be a thing. I'll take this on most of my Fletcher, on most of my American, high-tier American destroyer captains. For example, I prefer to play them as torpedo boats. Adrenaline Rush, same skill hit's always been, although now it costs three points instead of two, just like we saw in the in the, uh, in the the cruiser tree, um, changing the opportunity cost of what was obviously a powerful skill that was probably a little under-costed before. Inertia Fuse for HE Shells. Now, for an, in the Destroyer Tree, this now costs three points instead of four. It costs four points over in the Cruiser Tree. This is noteworthy. Um, is it the sort of thing that you're really going to do? I, I question it. I, I do not envision a ton of Destroyers taking this skill. Now, um, I'll, I'll caveat that in a minute. But in general, there are most destroyer guns are not large enough to really take advantage of this skill. You take it on light cruisers, the six-inch HE spamming light cruisers, because the extra the extra penetration damage gets you so over some important armor thresholds that you want to be able to, to breach to, to damage enemy battleships, as an example. But cruiser guns are so small, and those the base penetration is is already so kind of on the lowish side. You see there. 21 millimeters for Fletcher. If I was to add 25% to that, it would be another 5 millimeters, 4 millimeters, 4 millimeters. That would get me up to 25 millimeters of pen. Eh, there's almost no armor, sch armor scheme out there that I'm penning at 25 that I'm not penning at 21. Yes, we can sit here and nitpick some corner cases, but I'm talking about in general, you're probably not going to invest in this skill. Okay? Um, yeah, I just I I can't think of too many situations. Now I'll caveat this: the one exam, the one kind of uh, exception I can think of right now, off the top of my head, super easy. New tier eight premium Pan Asian destroyer Fen Yang. Fen Yang has the the gimped penetration on her Japanese 100 millimeter guns that Akizuki was tested with all those years ago, and then Wargaming rejected it and gave Akizuki like super pen. All right, way crazy buff pen. Um. This is a skill that Fen Yang captains basically have to have to be able to combat other destroyers, which I hate. It pisses me off that they've designed a destroyer that is essentially required to take a specific captain skill to be competitive at fighting other destroyers, but that's what Fen Yang is. Um, and so at least it only costs three points now, yay, uh, and instead of four. So that's, that's a, I won't call that a Fen Yang buff because that's a lie, but it is a little more convenient, I suppose. Um, superintendent, again, nothing fancy here, same skill it's always been, three points, get you some extra consumables, right where you left it, and then, again, same as before, survivability expert, right where you left it at three points, pretty much every, this, I won't say it's a mandatory skill, but pretty much every destroyer in the game that has the points to spend is going to take survivability expert. Now we're down to the fourth tier skills, so what kind of interesting things has Wargaming got down here? Well, first up, we have what, call, what they call main battery and AA expert. This is basically what we used to call advanced firing training, okay? It increases your main battery range and increases the purse from your flak shell. It increases the damage that your flak, put, your flak clouds put up. 
Um, there are destroyers in the game that will absolutely take this skill. Some of the high-tier Russian gunboats, I'm looking at you, Haberdovsk or Udaloy or Tashkent, that extra range on the main battery gives them a lot more comfort zone to work in. Um, I could see this on, uh, maybe not the French necessarily, um, but there are absolutely destroyers in this game that I would take this on, again, for the main battery range. I cannot imagine... I have a hard time envisioning that I would take this for the flak damage. There are there are destroyers in the game that put up a lot of flak that are really good at it. Holland, Smallland, the the European line, for example. But I don't think that I would take the skill on those on those ships. Um, I just don't think it's necessary. the The main battery range doesn't do them too many favors, uh, other than make them easier to spot when they're in gunfights. So yeah, that's something that I think a lot of destroyer captains sometimes forget. Um, you know. Part of the part of playing a destroyer is is controlling your vision, right? Times you want it, times you're okay being spotted, times you absolutely don't want to be spotted. But if you increase your main battery range, and uh, that just you, what you're doing is you're increasing the number of ships that can see you when you pull the trigger for any reason, right? Even if it's in self defense, even if it's you've got a destroyer in your face, pew pewing you to death, and you have to fight back. If your main battery range is artificially larger than it needs to be because of the skill or because of a of a, of a module on your ship. More other, more other players, more other ships can see you when you stop firing. So let's say you're in a gunfight, uh, a knife fight with another destroyer. You beat him. Congratulations. But for the next 20 seconds, your gun bloom, you're, you're detected still on the surface, and is uh, that you've got that extra 20% radius that people, more people can see you in. So be very careful what destroyers you might consider taking this skill on. Next up, we have a new skill called Swift in Silence. It sounds very, very deadly and very intimidating. It increases your ship's speed while you're undetected. This is really, really handy. And it costs you, your main battery reload um, goes back, it gets 5% slower. So if you were to combo it with main battery AA specialist, these two skills would counteract each other and your main battery reload would stay right where it was. Now, this is an interesting idea. This is an interesting skill. I look at this skill and I think, hmm, there are some ships I feel like could benefit from this. Some, there are some very low detectability ships that have mediocre speed i'm looking at you lightning um some of the japanese destroyers will probably will probably play around with this skill i think there's there's definitely i mean main battery five percent of crappy main battery reload on a japanese destroyer is not really really gonna be you know, not really gonna be noticed all that much um so yeah i think there's definitely some interesting things that can be that can be attempted with this skill i might play around with this a few times um tip while we're sitting here psa while we're while we're having this having this conversation about this skill one of the destroyers you might consider putting the skill on is Tier 9 Premium Italian Destroyer Paola Emilia. You see her down there on my on my, on my my uh, carousel. Um, right now, when this skill is active on Paola Emilio, she breaks the 60-knot barrier and outruns her own smoke. Okay? So don't take the skill on Paola Emilia yet until they get that fixed. 60-knot <laughs> barrier. I can't believe I just uttered those words. Anyway, um, so yes. Um, four points... I don't know, but there are definitely some destroyers in this game that could benefit from the extra speed, so there's some corner cases where I'll be playing around with this skill. Next up, radio location. Again, same thing it's always been for a while now. You know, RPF was going to break the game four years ago. Here we are, four years later, RPF still in the game, still doing what it does. Um, another torpedo-centric kind of destroyer skill, quite good on the Japanese, Shimakaze, and that sort of thing. Um... I know some other people that take this skill on uh, what they consider to be like destroyer hunter destroyers, like a black or a small end. I think there's some value there. Um, I typically don't, but that's just me. Your 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 choice may vary. Uh, that's the beauty of this system. Everybody gets to kind of pick their own way. Okay, but and no changes here. Uh, fearless brawler. This is an interesting skill. Uh, the more I look at this skill, the more I'm kind of going, hmm. I can definitely think there's some ships that I'm going to play around with this on. Uh, for four points, you get a 10% buff to your main battery reload. That could be pretty sexy, especially when you combine it with the 5% you already got back over here. You get uh, one additional salvo in your AA out of your, uh, out of your sorry, one additional flak burst out of your AA guns. That can be handy. Um, as well as, this is where it hurts a little bit, a 5% nerf to your detection radius. Hmm, so there are definitely some, some destroyers that I think will benefit from this skill and make use of it. Again, you guys might crucify me a little bit. I look at a ship like Smallland, right? Smallland, um, you know, that extra 5% detectability on a Smallland is perhaps not so atrocious. I mean, Smallland is already a ship that can easily counter radar whatever it is that's that's spotting her, and her detection radius is only like 6.1. It's not massively amazing to begin with. This would pump it up to, let's say, about 6.5, um, and you're getting a main battery reload, and you're getting even more flak puffs out of that ship. 
yeah, I think that might not be too bad for four points. There's a lot going on here. Um, and I haven't sat down to think through every single destroyer in the game of where I might take this, but my the bottom line is for four points, depending on the ship you're thinking, depending on the ship you're playing, I think there's absolutely value in this skill. Uh, keep an eye on it, and, and there's, there's going to be some interesting builds that fall out of it, I think. Commander, I'm sorry, Concealment Expert, same thing. It's always been straight up 10% buff to your, de uh, buff to your detection radius. I won't, con I, this, is, this is a mandatory skill, but basically by the time you're into the mid-tiers, you really need this skill to stay competitive in Destroyers. Um, this, this to me right now, this, this lineup right here is now basically my new base 10-point Destroyer build for basically whatever I'm driving. Um, I'm, there are uh, some corner cases where I might consider taking Grease the Gears instead of Preventive Maintenance, but certainly my next nine points are going into Last Stand, Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert. Um, like, that'd be, that's like the default. And then if I play the ship and I realize I don't need one of these skills, or I, I can, I can muck, I can muck about with it later, but to me, that's like the starting baseline from which I would basically spec almost every destroyer in the game. But yep, Concealment Expert, no changes here. Last but not least, we have Dazzle. Now, my chat and I on Twitch were talking about this one last night. This skill, as worded the way it described, it incoming for the first 20 seconds after you're spotted, uh, or excuse me, for those 15 seconds after you're spotted, um, it reduces the accuracy of incoming shells by reduce, increasing their dispersion ellipse by 20%. Hmm. So there's, there's some interesting things to unpack here. Um, if you are playing a, a destroyer, again, I come back to potentially a gunboaty destroyer that is a very kind of hit and run play style. Uh, I could point at a, a, a Khabarovsk, I could point at a Kleber, right? Fire, 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 go silent for a while. Shoot, 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 go silent for a while. This skill has some value, uh, because you're increasing your survivability for that 15 to 20 second window immediately right after you, you open fire. Um, I think it's going to have to take a lot of, a lot of play time and a lot of testing, a lot of, you know, I, I played this, I played this ship with this skill. Did it actually help my survivability? Um, I, I, but, but quantifying this is going to be difficult, right? Anytime you're trying to quantify anything to do with dispersion is difficult. That's kind of what I'm trying to, trying to point out here. But the reality is, is that I think there are absolutely ships in the game that this will be useful on. Um, certainly certain play styles that this will be useful on. And I think it brings some interesting uh, connotations. The key here is that to me this is this is a much more advanced kind of kind of destroyer skill because you got to learn you got to learn when to stop shooting right if you're the, to maximize the use of this skill you can't constantly be running around with your finger on the mouse button pew 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 okay you have to learn to stop every now and then change your position change your angle make your opponent turn his guns look somewhere else then open fire again then go dark then open fire again then go dark. If you be that annoying little jerk that, that flits around the back of the map and just spews, spews shells all game. Again, I look at like a Habarovsk and think, hmm, yeah, there's something there, there's there's some synergy here that might be worthwhile. Um, I also think that maybe a ship that you end up taking Dazzle on is a ship you don't take Concealment Expert on, right? Some of these some of these long range, high detection, gunboaty type skills. We were talking about this in chat on Twitch last night. Um, Paolo Emilio, right? Think about a Paolo Emilio trying like one of his little YOLO torpedo runs. That could be a really good skill for him, huh? Right? Four points. He gets in close. He gets right up next to your hull. Bam, here come the torpedoes. And the one salvo, right? If that, if that Paolo is played correctly, the one salvo that you're going to get at him gets basically a 20% dispersion nerf against, against him while, when those shells go in. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, um, most of the interesting choices in the new tree are kind of all here at Tier 4 with, with, with Dazzle, with Fearless Brawler, with Swift and Silence. Those are kind of the three hmm, interesting new skills. I will say I do like some of the, the, the torpedo-centric skills. It's nice to see these in the torpedo tree. We've pretty much only really had, you know, torpedo reload before. Now we have some things that, okay, your torpedoes go faster. Okay, your torpedoes flood, champ, flood higher. Um, what, what we don't see, of course, uh, what you do see in the carrier tree, which would be really nice, would be like a skill. I would have loved a four-point skill that worked against um, torpedo protection, right? That helps negate some of the opponent's torpedo protection. I mean, like, can you imagine playing a Shimakaze or any Japanese destroyer with those skills? Like, really just hard, go all in on the torpedo skills. Yeah, that'd be fun. But unfortunately, Wargaming didn't give us that, so we'll see. They have the flexibility to edit these trees now without having to muck up anybody else, which I do, I do like a lot. Now, one thing I want to point out here at the very end, you see this is my Ovechkin. He does have a couple of skills that he gets a, a better bonus on. For example, his Grease the Gears is 20%. A standard Grease the Gears is only 15%. His Survivability Expert, 400 HP per tier. 
Typical survivability expert, 350 points per tier. The special captains that have these little enhanced skills like this um, still have them in the other trees where these skills exist. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's see, I need all skills. When you click all skills, now you can start to see the trees. Because remember, you can now train a commander for multiple ship types, okay? So he can have skills and all these other things. Um, so again, we looked at the destroyer tree. You see there, he's got both skills. I typically have been running Ovechkin as a destroyer captain. But when I go over to the cruiser, the, go over to the cruiser tree, look at that. Those skills are right where they were. Those same two skills still have the same bonus. They're just in the cruiser tree. Battleship tree, here's a little different. Battleship does not, the battleship tree does not have survivability expert. However, it does have the, equi the equivalent of expert marksman, now called Grease the Gears. And you see there, is, it's 25% in the battleship tree, not just 20%. Because the value of that skill, the, um, the baseline value of that skill is now fixed in the tree, not fixed to the skill itself. In other words, Grease the Gears in the battleship tree is, is a baseline of 20%. Over in the cruiser tree, it's 15%. Over in the bat in the in the destroyer tree, it's fifteen percent. So here, Ovechkin basically, in wherever you place Ovechkin, he gets a five percent bonus to that skill. It doesn't change the baseline. He just says this skill is a little better because it's me. Okay, and then survivability expert does appear over in the or the in over in the um, aircraft uh, the aircraft carrier tree. You see there, his is thirty health per per tier instead of twenty five health per tier. So a little bit of a change there with some of these captains that have unique bonus skills and so on and so forth. Anyway, guys, enough of that today. I've talked long enough. A little look through the destroyer tree. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll be talking more builds tonight on Twitch. Come on by, say hi, drop in, request a ship, and we'll derp around. In the meantime, y'all be safe, wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.